Welcome to Soundbridge Music's Featured Artist Interview. In this series, we get to know front range artists who not only shape the local music scene, but who joined with Soundbridge Music in its mission to use the power of music to improve the lives of individuals and bring communities together. We're so excited to be here today with Allie and Beth. Allie and Beth sing soulful tunes with tight harmonies, incorporating tasteful guitar, violin, and viola into their original and covers. We're so grateful they took the time to chat with us today. Welcome, we have our November 2019 uh, featured artist, Allie and Beth. Hey. So, welcome. Uh, so, we have, uh, so that would be Allie Grayson. Yes, sir. And Beth uh, Wilberger. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, your nickname is the Music Mamas. Is that, is that actually oh. a nickname or is that just a, I, that's what I saw on your uh, online yeah. stuff, so to talk about how we're moms you know I know with my history of playing music it's been a really nice you know just um basically just kind of finding that other person that kind of can relate on uh-huh. that mom level so yeah, yeah we're, we're music mamas and yeah, have, we both, both have boys both and, have two boys mm-hmm. yep and go yeah they're in the same school and yeah so we get the mom thing when our kids are sick or we understand toting car seats around and all that good stuff. <laughs> We're on the same level. Yeah. Oh, that, that must be really great. So yeah. how, how do you all, um, I mean, I think that's an important question here uh, for, uh, there's a lot of musicians out there that have families and uh, I, how do you find time to balance uh, the music and the performance that you do uh, with, with family life? What's the struggles there? That's a great question. <laughs> I feel like we've pr- approached it really differently. Yeah. Beth, it, I mean, you can speak to your, for yourself, yeah. but she didn't like lay it down very much. When I had my first, <clears throat> I, my first boy, I'm like, wow, I don't even understand how mm-hmm. I could play. Like, I, I think I'm going to be on maternity leave from music for the next <laughs> 18 years. Cause I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. I'm just always nursing or changing a diaper or like getting home for a nap time and Beth really gave me the imagination for what that looks like as a mama to keep keep with your craft and to keep playing she's like we'll just make it work yeah we bumped into each other at Lions Folk Fest a, yeah several years <clears throat> ago and um uh and she's like yeah, let's start playing together let's just try it out and I'm like in the weeds of motherhood I don't know what that looks like she's like well let me let me just come over to your place when when the boys are sleeping and so she came over and we started rehearsing during nap times and so and for you I don't know how do you yeah you you know it's so interesting like yeah I don't feel like my life ever really stopped musically Mm -hmm. I've always Mm -hmm. taught a lot of private lessons I think I took about six weeks off Mm -hmm. if that and I just remember I had my um swing and I would, especially my first, he was so chill. So I was so lucky, like the, the luckiest mom in the sense of like, he would be so happy in the swing. And I would have students come and a lot of these students were obviously moms, you know, uh-huh. with their kids. So they were like, this is great and no mm-hmm. problem. And so I felt like it was very lucky that way to kind of just keep being as an instructor. And then playing wise, I've been very lucky to play with my siblings, um, Mm -hmm. or my siblings, specifically my brother and then my mom. Mm -hmm. Um, So when she moved out here, I had just had my second. And, you know, I have a very supportive husband and he knows what I do. It's been a very big creative outlet for me. Mm -hmm. I've just been lucky with having some people reach out to me. I was part of a bluegrass band for a while. Mm -hmm. They reached out. They didn't think there was any way I was going to say yes, but it just happened to be like, yeah, let's try it. And it was it worked out well, you know, from for back then we had like a weekly practice in the evening and it was hard juggling it, mm-hmm. but you know, I just did it. I'm definitely a little crazy. I'm a multitasker and definitely don't understand boundaries all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's a yes girl. Is she that, says is that, yes. Yes. <laughs> that probably is one of the reasons why, but, um, but yeah, but playing with mm-hmm. Allie has been so great because she's definitely helped me to also like figure out what works for both of us together. And it's been a, it's been a nice Fit. Like this past summer, we're probably the busiest we had been. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're going to kind of come into a time where another transition. Mm-hmm. Oh, fantastic. Well, that, and so, well, let's, let's talk about, um, well, I, you mentioned that you, you got together at Lions a few years ago, and that's when you decided to play together. Mm-hmm. But you knew each other before then. Mm-hmm. I, I noticed it, it looks like you both have backgrounds in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Is, is that where you two met, or was it in a different way? No. 
No, I used to live in Winter Park for a long, long time before Boulder. Um, and I was a musician up there, but also uh, I would book a yeah. music series yeah. up there, up in the mountains. And, and Beth called me to just book her brother, Court mm-hmm. McCumber, a couple times. So she was more, I knew her as on the booking yeah. agent side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then knew she played um, viol- or strings and sang as well. So, yeah. Yeah, we actually, um, when Allie moved to Boulder, mm. she actually reached out to me and more of asking about the booking side of things. Mm. And so I remember meeting you. I can mm. vividly still remember that mm-hmm. in a coffee shop. And we were just, you know, talking. And I said, mm. yeah, let me know if I can help you with anything. Mm. Um, and then I felt like some time passed. Mm. And we hadn't seen each other. This is before Allie started having kids. So mine are a little bit older than hers. Um, and then I felt like our paths started to cross a little bit more. And and when they started crossing even more and realizing her her oldest is was close in age to my youngest, mm. That's when oh. we were like, we should get the boys together. And then it was like, what are you doing musically? And you were like, not much. And I was like, God, yeah. you should, because I, I love her stuff. You know, I'm being a secondary musician in the sense of in a group where I play violin, not as much of a lead role all the time. I really look and see what kind of music do I want to play with and, and what songs really resonate with me and what do I want to sing and and I love harmony singing and I love mm. harmony singing with women. And I just hadn't done that a lot and really finding someone that fit. And when we got together that first time, I was like, wow, this is. This yeah, is really cool. it was pretty magical. It was pretty magical because I've always, I mean, I've strings and harmonies have always given me chills. I mm. just absolutely love strings and good harmony and then we got together yeah i got together with beth and wow i mean my my previous uh band was more of the a full a full band orchestration which is neat you can bring a lot of different textures to the table can be pretty versatile and go in a lot of different directions and big and small um so i wasn't i'm not sure how this is going to work just doing the duo incarnation but it's been a joy to And that's be been my that. background is more of the duos because mm-hmm. I did play with my brother Court for many years. That's where the Nashville connection came in. He and I mm-hmm. moved to Nashville. I ended up mm-hmm. going to school in Nashville, college, finished up my college career years there at um, Belmont University doing music business. So I definitely had a lot of that business sense. And mm-hmm. it was a really neat um, way to look at music, not only creatively and as a performer, but also on the booking side, mm. you know, and I definitely am a little type A, so I definitely have, I, I like, I like doing it all as a musician. Mm. I enjoy both sides. And so, um, I really enjoy more of that rawness of a, of a duo or a trio or something that's more of acoustic bass. So it's been really fun to take a lot of these songs that Allie's had on her CDs as a full band and kind of, you know, mold them into what works for her and I, you mm-hmm. know? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, how, how does the molding go? Because it looks like you've got a lot of different instruments here. We got we got uh, uh, a guitar, a fiddle, a violin, a viola. Are there any other instruments that you're all incorporating into your duo? No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, sometimes we'll do a trio and bring in a, uh-huh. a percussionist mm-hmm. here and there. But, yeah, for the most part, it's really, really nimble and easy to get out in and out of tight corners like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you decide? How do you decide when you're making the arrangements? What's the, um, do you have like a method uh, to, to how you do it? Or is it just whatever feels good? Yeah, like when she's singing songs, I can definitely like between like, let's say violin and viola. They're very similar, yet the viola mm-hmm. is very warm. It's rich, lower register. Mm-hmm. So on some of her songs, the minute I hear it, it's like, okay, this is definitely a, a tune that I'd love to play viola. And I love in, weaving viola and violin together, you know? Um, I grew up playing violin mainly and then switched over and, inter- and got viola into the mix when I was playing with my brother doing a lot of recordings, wanting to hear like a string section. Court's background also is cello, so we would do a lot of string combinations. And I just started thinking, God, the, the viola is just a fabulous instrument. I want to add it to live performances as well. And with a singer-songwriter, especially a lot of tunes that Allie sings, it's just, it's a beautiful low end, you know? Mm-hmm. So normally it's, it's basically just kind of what the song is lending. Mm-hmm. And then obviously fiddle and violin, they're the same instrument, yet very different in the yeah. sense of the styles. So yeah. Um, yeah, and then in terms of just like what you might hear on one of my CDs, you might hear an electric guitar rip a really cool solo. Well, Beth just goes and makes it her own, you know, and she is she's incredible with improv and um, each of my songs she's taken, um, you know, her own approach to 
a lot of the solos and um, it's been just a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. How about, how about uh, how you structure your harmonies? Do you have like a particular type of chord that you like to put together or is that, do you have any, any... I have a lower register in my voice, so typically Beth is just always finding a killer harmony above mm. me in general. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, you know, I would say harmony singing goes back to my... Um, my, my training as a musician growing up classical, you know, mm -hmm. my mom's a classical musician. So the ear training was, was super big when she was teaching us and all my other teachers. So for me, I just hear it, you know, mm -hmm. and by doing it so much, um, it's just one of the, I love, love, love harmony singing. I love hearing it. I just love the way it just mm -hmm. can be so powerful to a mm -hmm. song personally. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's really fun to yeah find those and for the most part yeah it's that's come super easy as well every once in a while there might be a tune or a song that i'm like mm, we'll have to, we have to figure it out sometimes i go a little low and then i jump up high or something mm -hmm. but again i feel like that's a connection when you know you can sing with somebody mm -hmm. and it just mm -hmm. boom it just happens, just comes, mm -hmm. it just happens yeah. naturally so you just got, you know? got a lot of instinct going that, you guys have a good mm -hmm. connection there that that's, yeah that's good mm -hmm. so um it sounds like you both have uh backgrounds doing uh, more of the booking and scheduling type of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but how, how do you divvy up your uh, non-musical duties in your in your duo? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Beth is definitely, uh, she's definitely more gifted in the booking side of things. She's, yeah, done more of that side of things. So I, I'm um, more of the songwriter, yeah. show up, play a gig, um, and, it, uh, it, and we both have, since we um, have played a lot of music separately and with mm -hmm. other bands, mm -hmm. we have our own sort of fan base and mailers. So, you know, for instance, we have a, a show coming up this next weekend. And so I'll, I'll have where, my... Base. Where's this show next weekend? Just, oh. just a, it, never yeah, miss a chance to plug. Yes, it's yeah. next Saturday night. Oh, Saturday night. At actually a, a private residence here in Longmont, but it is open oh. to the public. Mm -hmm. So please RSVP and you can find all the information um, on our Facebook page, we have an event, um, which is facebook.com backslash Allie and Beth, but at the home of Alan and Kathy, and they live actually off of um, Airport Road over there by Twin Lakes Golf Oh, Club. very nice. Uh -huh. So normally how those work is, um, yeah, you RSVP and then you'll get the address from them, mm -hmm. but really I've played a couple there um, with other combinations, and it's... House shows are just so wonderful. It's probably where mm -hmm. Allie and I really shine, and mm -hmm. Allie, especially being a songwriter, really mm -hmm. can tell her stories. Mm -hmm. um, they're just magical, magical venues, honestly, yeah. for a performer because the audience is right there, and and just really fun things can happen at those shows. There's no other distractions, and and then afterwards or at the break, get to really get to know those people, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and then they become even more fans and and friends, mm -hmm. you know. And so I think that's why they're so magical for for musicians. Very good, very good. Um, all right, let me see here. Just uh... so uh, you you brought up. Your brother, mm -hmm. Port McCumber. Yep. And so he, he's, he's a name. He's a he name. He's a and, name. <laughs> and it looks like uh, you, you played with him for, for quite some time, and you actually did, did the booking for mm -hmm. his, the, yep. for Lucky Nugget Records. We, yep. Like, so, you know. yeah, we performed quite a bit. He pretty much introduced me into this world of folk music. Mm -hmm. I was playing classical for so long, and um, he came out to the Rocky Mountain Song School in mm. Lyons in the summer of 2000. And he just fell in love, always loved Colorado, but then fell in love with that there's this whole other group of people and that, that song right. And I could probably make more of a living rather than staying in Nashville, which he liked Nashville, but he was a little bit more restless wanting to get out west. Mm -hmm. So he really wanted me to come, so I came the next year. And we actually did the song school, we did Rocky Grass. I just kind of like dived into the whole acoustic music scene with bluegrass and folk. And he was like, do you want to tour with me? And I was like, yeah, let's do this. And um, and it was super fun. For years, we toured out of a VW van, and we literally mm -hmm. went all over the country. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I saw the coolest places that you would never go to, you know? And it was definitely a good time to do it in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. I got married. Um, mm -hmm. And... Yeah, so I'm still blessed to be able to play with him. Our music has definitely evolved because of the different groups we've also played with. So mm -hmm. that's what's really fun when you, you know, play with somebody that is so close to you like that, of how music can evolve and like same thing, like how the things that Allie and I do together 
how that benefits her and I, mm -hmm. you know, just like the other musicians that Allie's play with and how that, that all benefits mm -hmm. and how it weaves into our musicianship together. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about that. You, you you spend a lot of time as a solo musician, and you have um, a couple couple albums that you've mm -hmm. released. Um, and so, how is it? I mean, I guess how how is it constructing the people that are supporting you? Mm -hmm. How is that different than committing to a duo, or 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 just tell us about your other collaborations and yeah. how it differs from being just solo? Sure. I mean, and that's my exposure to Nashville is really just flying there to uh, record a couple oh, of albums. Okay, so I didn't okay. ever live there, or spend much time there, but that's where I've recorded my albums with some great people. Um, and then, yeah, so I would record an album, come back, and then I'd have a full band here um, in Colorado, and we would just, you know, get the album under our belt and tour Colorado and get the, get the songs out. It's so, uh, like I say, it's really fun to play with the full band, mm -hmm. the, the textures and, and moments that you can bring. Um, I've found it to be, you know, just more challenging, all the logistics of organizing more people. And I am... Um, I'm a proponent of paying my band and and paying them more than a beer, you know, yeah. and a free meal. <laughs> and so th that was always a struggle for me mm -hmm. to find gigs that I could pay my band. And most, I would say 95% of the time, um, you know, if I made, I, I would just give all the money away to my band. And I, yeah. and so for many, many years and, you know, m music has not been a lucrative business for me because I'm just giving my money away to the band and um but that's okay for me music is uh primarily relational so mm. yeah whether it's a house show mm -hmm. and not even the moment the moments I get to share stories behind the songs are really powerful but then the moments I get to be with people at the end of the show you know uh, like just to connect I've had people come and say wow your music I feel like I went to therapy for an hour <laughs> you know so a lot of my songs lend themselves to just you know people just um, desiring to move people towards more healing and freedom in their lives mm -hmm. to remind people that they are so loved um, that they have great worth and value and they're worth fighting for and so I get these really cool relational moments um, with people and that's my that's my primary goal with with mm. music so it's been uh really really awesome it, it, and delightful and easy to be with beth i mean <laughs> she's just so she's so positive um it's we like, like we're really nimble we're really uh small so we can like fit into you know tight spaces and um and that's just been so cool it's been really a joy to to do that to stretch out and uh, do the duo thing, and all, and all, I have to, you know, work up my guitar chops too. When, when oh. I'm playing in a duo, when I played in a full band, it was a little easier to hide behind all the other instruments. Do Do you find that to be the case? Is that uh, yeah? That's, oh, it yeah. definitely is out there. Precise. I mean, you do, and mm -hmm. and especially Allie. I mean, one of the reasons why I think I love playing violin is because I can come in and out mm. and don't have to play every single note. So you know, I feel like I'm I'm more on the lucky side. But when you're playing a rhythm instrument, I mean, you're holding that down. Yeah. You got to know exactly where you're going and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, it's just, but, but it's been, you know, I think for us, it's also been, um, really good for us this last year to also open ourselves up to venues or, or places to play that maybe aren't long term that we want to go back to, mm -hmm. but it's really made us really tight, mm -hmm. you know, with having to really like block out all that, all the other commotion or the distractions and really just, mm -hmm you know, focus on each other and get mm -hmm. our stuff really dialed in. And you really can't do that unless you really play, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice all day long, and we had a good steady stream there for a while. And now we've gotten to a point where it's so great to introduce new songs. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm always like, Allie, what you got? Like, what's your mm -hmm. new tune? Or I'll listen to her CD, and I'm like, why don't we do this one? And she'll be like, oh, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I'll have to, like, figure out that for, for you and I and see how we can make that work, you know? Um, so it's been fun to be able to get to that point now where we've got a really good base of tunes, we mm -hmm. feel really comfortable, so then we can kind of explore new songs. Because it takes yeah. a while when you're, when you're playing with people. It mm -hmm. just takes mm -hmm. time. And you have to be okay taking that time to get yeah. to that point. Yeah. Don't you feel the same so, way? Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like when we first started, you know, in my head, ideally, I was like, wow, it'd be so cool to just play like maybe one show a month. That would be like something to work up to. 
And I mean, in in August we had six shows. Yeah. yeah. And so we and, and which all, all that to be said, I still actually would prefer to play one nice say like one nice house show yeah then six i call them wallpaper gigs you know where you're just background music at a bar or something like that um and and but you like to beth's um point you you have to pound the pavement a little bit you got to get out there and play a you know five like marginal gigs and you know this the next ones yeah and i feel like we've kind of gotten there which is nice you know so now we can can be more picky which is great Yep, so I have a third little boy in my tummy right now. I'm oh. growing. So I'm this gr- is the transition for Allie and Beth. I know. Yeah, so this is why Beth alluded to like another transition. So when I have a baby, I definitely slow down musically a lot. Um, and so I feel really grateful that we've gotten to a place where we have yeah. pounded mm-hmm. the pa- pavement for a while. Yeah. Um, and then so now we can just say yes to fewer but nicer yeah. Yeah, moments and gigs. So. Yeah. Well, I want to hear a little bit more about pounding the pavement. So what, because uh, we, uh, you know, I think mostly artists, uh, other musicians listen mm-hmm. to this, uh, this interview. And, yeah. And so, um, I mean, what, you know, what was that like to get up to the point where you're doing a lot of you know, house concerts and, and, uh, I mean, cause that's the, kind of the ideal, I guess, at this level is to be doing right. that, get that intimacy it and whatnot. Is. So what, what, what did that look like? Develop, you know, getting up to that point where, you know, you could conceivably just be doing one show a month and having it be a really good show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it's making relationships. So it's getting out there. It's having a face. It's, you know, starting to, you know, also having people say, oh yeah, you're, in, you're with, you know, you're with Allie or Allie, oh, you're with Beth. And mm-hmm. You know, like we've had some in- instances where she's called me and been like, oh, I've got a connection in Winter Park. Do you want to come up and play this? And mm-hmm. I'd be like, yeah, because it probably will open a door for something else for us, you mm-hmm. know? So it's also doing that kind of things where you just have to a lot of times take things mm-hmm. because it's going to open up that next door. Sure, you know? sure. Or yeah. you play a gig and you're pleasantly surprised, which is always very nice. Like mm-hmm. we did yeah. this um, great, they do it on Friday nights throughout the summer at Indian Peaks Golf Course. Hmm. It's a really great, great gig. You would think this is like, oh, how what's this going to be like? But they create a really nice hmm. listening atmosphere on their patio there. It's mm-hmm. beautiful scenery. You're looking out over the golf course and the, and the mountains are in the background. And and so like for something like that, I look forward to doing that again hmm. next next summer, you know, mm-hmm. and have a couple ideas of, of those gigs that'll be fun to go back to. And we met a lot of great people. I feel like people that... Um, that, that like to come out and see us and then and then new people that mm-hmm. I feel like will say oh you guys should play here you should play there mm-hmm. and so that's another reason why you have to kind of pound the pavement or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just get out there and play yep yeah I mean every show I, I look for like the the human connection so whether that's you know wow this was a really cool venue they really appreciate live music here you can really feel it um let's let's play here again or it's like you know almost like prayerfully going into a space of like you know, who, who do I get to meet today? Mm-hmm. Um, and it maybe is literally one person. I played a gig at like Toad Tavern in South Denver at one point. And I mean, it was one of those nights where I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> like what was the, like, what was the point? Like that was such a long drive. Yeah. I got up, you know, like got to sing like a few songs at the sound was marginal. Um, yeah. Like what was the point of that? Like that was, that felt like a, a a wash <laughs> and all of and there but are gigs like that that are definitely gigs. are and but, you just say oh right. my goodness i will never do that again right but they're less frequent they're yes. way less than right less often than you you would think i mean that particular night though most of it was pretty horrible but at the end i had a guy come up and give me his card and say hey i'm a drummer and you yeah. know i like got his card and i'm like oh, whatever you know i didn't think too much about it and he turns out he's a dear family friend now yeah. we he's oh, my drummer he also, like, yeah and he plays some percussion so, with us yeah, yeah like, he is oh, a great he's guy. my go to guy so like that that's just an example of it's if it's if it's one connection that you make at each show, you know, over time, that's going to be, that's going to be yeah, a fan Yeah, if base. it's one connection or you realize, boy, this really, I'm just going to write, so I don't need to do that gig, you know? Yeah. So you can look at it both ways from a musician's standpoint. Yep. And, and that, and that's a positive because you're always going to walk away from every gig, every situation as learning something. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> or even if it's like a slightly or a small pain gig, yeah. sometimes we just talk about like, oh, that yeah. was a paid rehearsal. Yeah. You know, right. that was yeah. like, we were yeah. about, that was a total background yeah. gig. Yeah. That was one we probably won't do again, but 
we got to it was a paid rehearsal yeah so mm-hmm. you can always take the positive angle absolutely yeah. and make it absolutely. make it what it is mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so let's see here so beth you have uh so kaleidoscope music and studio mm-hmm. and that's the, the the business you run you have a, a house of joy and yep. kids house of joy mm-hmm. uh can you can you talk about that, that yes um so yeah, my, so my Kaleidoscope Music, it's either Kaleidoscope Music or Kaleidoscope Music Studio. Both are, you know, I kind of use both those names quite a bit. Um, so that's my private home studio, but I also do a lot of kid music classes. So since having kids, I definitely dived into the world of kid music. And that has been, you know, really fun. It's been awesome. And my mom has a background in performance and was a teacher for years. And so it's really fun to get with, together with her, who is this... Um, concert pianist and and just have so she's her performance skill and just being able to get an audience going especially with the kids is magical and she and I really have a fun time doing our kids show together which is called kids house of joy Mm -hmm. so we've been doing that pretty pretty much the last five six years and then the last three years we've been really kicking it up playing in libraries all over the summer they do a summer reading program so all over it's the been state. really fun playing all over the state yep mm-hmm. so the area as well as the state and mm-hmm. my two boys are now part of that they both play instruments um tristan mm-hmm. is 10 reed is seven and um they both play piano violin and some ukulele and being a kid show i love getting them um on the stage definitely i feel like it hopefully gets the kids in the audience a little bit more exciting so Mm. to be able to get them to be part of that is really fun because as a musician you know i do feel like in order to make some money or to figure out a way to have that be some type of income you have to definitely like figure out a few different things you know Mm -hmm. for me who doesn't want to be on the road all the time Mm -hmm. and I'm you know don't Mm -hmm. want to right now go back to that I want to be a mom I want to be able to pick my kids up from school Mm -hmm. and do all that Mm -hmm. so what do those things look like and this is what it looks like for me Mm -hmm. you know and so my house of joy is with my mom and that is kind of we call it Colorado classical where we play classical music we play a lot of pop Broadway she's definitely introduced me to standards jazz gypsy swing um, I'm having a blast singing lots of different styles, and it's so fun. We do a lot of senior gig homes, and nursing home gigs, um, and that's very rewarding as well. And so, um, yeah, just another piece of being a musician, you know, getting out there sharing your craft. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but speaking of uh, pieces of being a musician, mm-hmm. uh, Allie, it looks like you've you've had some music that's been licensed in mm-hmm. in television shows and whatnot. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah. Um, gosh, I wish it has happened more often. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I kind of teamed together with a licensing group and like within the first few months they were with me, they, they got, uh, one of my songs on, um, I think it's ABC. The, the Fosters, Foster's Let It Go. Was ABC the song Family. The Foster's ABC the... Family. That's what it is. I think it's okay. called something else now, that channel, or maybe not. I okay. don't know. Well, it's a show called those, yeah. Foster's. Mm-hmm. I don't really have TV, so I don't even <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I've never seen the show. Sure, sure. But I was grateful to have the song on, on there. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It's neat. Oh, so and are you? Do you continue to to, to send out? I mean, no. I, I I don't know the process of, of trying to get them licensed. You said a licensing group that you were involved. With. Yeah, it, and only for a short while. And it yeah, mm-hmm. I don't. They they might have even disbanded since then. I think it was oh, a short. It was like a short lived thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I'm grateful for the like the moment I was with them. They found a show for one of my songs right away. It was oh, cool. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's I, good. So a success story. That's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I'm kind of curious. Uh, you you went and, and studied uh, music business, mm-hmm. and I, I'm I'm curious. Uh, whenever somebody gets a degree in that, uh, just would you recommend that to most musicians that they they try to get um, uh, some music and in, uh, business instruction? And I'm also curious. Yes. How has <laughs> How has the business changed since you first got your degree? Oh, God, yes. So much. Mm-hmm. So much. Um, you Even Belmont alone is just such a different school now. Mm-hmm. So different. Belmont University was actually really one of the first universities to really have this music business program. Mm-hmm. And now lots of other schools are doing it. There's actually a CU. You can go to CU and I think at music oh. business now. Okay. Um, so for me, I think it's really helpful 
you know, we were doing things on a larger scale for, you know, so they were kind of not as much on the independent side, but what I loved and what I took with it from going to more of the independent when I was booking my brother and, you know, helping out some other musicians at the time, um, was just that it's still the same, you know, things you're learning that can go from whether you end up going and working for a record label or a marketing PR firm or whatever. It's still definitely having that knowledge of, being very like detail oriented if you really want mm-hmm. to get the gigs and go back there and you know i think the the response that i remember court was getting was like boy it's really nice that you have you have somebody in your corner that is doing all this for you and mm-hmm. they're documenting it and mm-hmm. and um you know they're on it they're asking the right questions it's little things that makes playing yeah. a gig so much more enjoyable mm-hmm. so i think as a musician it's really nice to kind of understand what how that all plays out so you can have a, a better and enjoy, more enjoyable career. Hmm. 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 Very interesting. Very interesting. I try to ask this question of everyone who comes in here, but uh, was there ever a time where you just felt like you really wanted to give up music and and just, just quit the, the whole business altogether? And if so, what, what got you past that? I mean, for me, I th- the the biggest tempting times to quit are kind of just rewinding back into the, like, wow, I have these songs and these more of these full band orchestrations. And just, there was just like such a sadness for me to like, the booking side has always been very hard for me. Like, just figure out how can I go? I just want to share these songs. These songs, I just want to like bless people and like love people with these songs and pay my band. Um... And so, and so those are the moments where I get the most discouraged and, or I'm like, gosh, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. You know, I mean, I, I'll never ever give up music. Me, music's a part of my soul. Like I will always be a songwriter. I will always keep singing. I mean, it's like music is such a massive part of my life. I will never give it up. But as far as like the desire to make it a profession or a, a business, you, yeah, like, it, you know, sometimes I'm just like, I don't know. It yeah. gets discouraging sometimes yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah, you know, um, definitely you have certain dreams or aspirations or you think this is how it's going to be. For me, there was definitely a, 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 a change when my brother and I were touring quite a bit. And then all of a sudden, I really had this desire to do something else in the business part of it. Not not with, I mean, I still wanted to be with an actually a music firm or a music company. So, you know, and I decided to stop touring full time because a part of me was just like, I'm not getting the enjoyment that I used to get. Mm. This is not playing the gigs I want to play. I'm... I'm just, it's just, this is taking more effort. Do I really love it that much? Because man, you are, when you're trying to do it as a living, you are putting yourself into situations that at the end of the day, you got to love music so much or see your Mm -hmm. end goal to get you there. Mm -hmm. And for a while there, it just felt more my brother's goal and I didn't Mm -hmm. want to lose Mm -hmm. what he and I had. So I took a step back for a little bit and said, you know what? I really got to do some other stuff. And, and it was good. It was really, really good. I, I want to say it was a good three to six month period where, you know, I wasn't playing with him and we were just kind of exploring other options. And when we came back together, um, it, was, it was much healthier as well as just rejuvenating, you know, mm-hmm. creatively as well. And I think just having those expectations, you know, I think sometimes you got to remove yourself. And so for me, that was a time um, that, that happened. And then again, moving forward of figuring out, like, again, having those expectations is where am I as a musician? What am I doing as a musician? I kind of have that expectation and knowing what I'm doing. Mm. So I still, you know, I, I love sharing. I love playing music. And now knowing that and going through all that, I'll, yeah, I'll never give it up. And again, it might change over the time Absolutely. and the years. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Yeah. like playing with Ali, you know, having other these other groups that I play with, it's, I love it. I love I love the diversity. That's what mm. feeds me. Mm. You know. <laughs> well, that's that's great. That's great. Uh, well, let's see. What what advice would you give musicians who are just entering the local scene? Mm. I mean, kind of that point. Like, keep yeah. that passion mm-hmm. alive. You know, uh, if it crushes your soul to go and play at this venue, for say, you know, like, mm. don't do it. Don't play at that venue. You know, like, create. Um, uh, um, 
you know, if your deal is just like, ah, I'm, I'm curious about songwriting, well, you know, find some local uh, songwriters and get together and, and, and hone in your skills and, and work on that side of things. Um, yeah, yeah, just enjoy the, just enjoy the ride. Try to keep music fun and check keep checking in with your heart along yeah. the way. I was going to say, and then the musicians that do want to really make that leap to play all the time, then go for it. Mm-hmm. And know these is what this is what it is. You're gonna have some really great gigs. Mm-hmm. You're have some not mm-hmm. really great gigs, mm-hmm. and that's okay. And mm-hmm. you're gonna learn from it all. And mm-hmm. you're gonna walk away and say, "This is what I got better at. I got better at these tunes, or I got better at presenting myself. Mm-hmm. All this, all that stuff matters, you know. And so I would say, you know, and working together as a team with other musicians, I feel like sometimes that gets lost. Mm-hmm. But we're all there to help each other. Mm-hmm. Um, is my take, like. You know, you use and go go try to meet some some other musicians that ha- that are doing it and have done it and, and ask questions. Absolutely. Don't be afraid to mm-hmm. make those relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. What do you want to achieve next in your music career? Mm. That's a great question. For me, so I, um, right before I found out I was pregnant, I was actually already talking to some producers and getting ready to mm. record another album. I was going to record uh, a kids album. I'm like, gosh, my boys are getting old. Before they get too old, I want to like just capture some of these songs that I've been writing for my kids um, and some of my favorite covers. Uh, and I got a bit sidetracked with now going to a midwife appointment and all of these things. <laughs> uh, not being able to breathe. Um, so anyways, that's a, a goal. So it's probably going to be pushed down the, the road a little bit, but that's, that's a, a bucket list thing. That's one of my... I'd love to produce my next album will probably be a kids album, mm. which will be a lot of fun. Yeah, just keep songwriting. Um, yeah, keep making musical connections. Watch my kids grow in in their music. And again, everything for me with music is very relational. So look for those moments where, I mean, for me that sometimes looks like playing a wedding or a funeral, mm. coming alongside a family in a really powerful moment when they need some beautiful music and supporting them in that way. So those are some of my goals. That's great. Yeah, I think just continuing to evolve as a musician, whether it's playing some solo stuff, that's probably been the most exciting over this last year for me is because of these senior gigs that I play, these senior living, from assisted living to memory care to, you know, more independent senior living, um, going into them by myself. And because I am, I always feel like I'm, I'm a side musician. Mm-hmm. And so it's been really fun to continue to hone in how I feel comfortable by myself, you know, and, and what I do. And so, yeah, just continue to explore that and all the other musical relationships. I think for Allie and I, um, yeah, I think we're going to grow as we continue to play, whether it's, you know, taking a little break, um, playing those shows that really matter to us. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the nice thing about where Allie and I are, we're very similar in that neither one of us are trying to do anything. Like, I feel like we're very similar, that we're, we're here in Boulder. Mm-hmm. We're not leaving right this second. Neither one of us is trying to, like, go do it full time. So mm-hmm. for us, I don't see it being that much of a change for our music mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. because Allie's having another child. And, mm-hmm. you know, it may, it'll probably give us more time to honestly create a lot more new music mm-hmm. is how I look at it, mm-hmm. you know? All right. What do you know about Soundbridge Music and its mission? Um, well, of what I'm a little bit familiar, music therapy, um, but really just you know supporting the, the supporting musicians mm-hmm. and supporting you know what's going on in the in the musical community, um, but always you know loving to know more and um, about you know what we can do also to help with Soundbridge. Mm-hmm. All right. We've already uh, plugged one of your shows. Uh, do you have any other shows coming up that you want to plug? Or yeah, any other activities or events? Yeah. D- is it December 5th? Up at 15th. 15th, up at Gold Hill. And we're, cool. we're going to be uh, playing from, is it five? From five to seven. Five to seven. Um, this is like our third year in a row. Yeah, it's the last show of the our year. last show of the year for us. So we've got these two shows. Um, and this is a really fun one, you know? it's Gold Hill Inn is just so fabulous. It's one of my favorite places to play. Mm. Um, over the years or just go and experience um, mm-hmm. and it's a special show because it's also um, so my brother Court he plays with, with James Moores together they're Moores and McCumber it's always their last show of the year as them oh. as a duo for their group 
And so it's been fun the last few years to, to do the five to seven gig before them. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, we normally always filter in some of our holiday music, so yeah. we'll probably do that again, mm -hmm. and just have a really fun time. And I think this year even more, it'll it'll feel a little bit more fun and exciting. And um, yeah, we encourage people to come up if they're already have tickets for Moors and McCumber, come up early. They serve bar food from five to seven, so you don't have to do the full dinner, which is which is a nice option on the Sunday mm -hmm. nights up yeah. there. But um, yeah, definitely come and enjoy, and we love. And if Moore's, that if music. that uh, the if Moore's and McCumber sells out, you can come to our show yeah. from five to seven, and then five and then seven. make a reservation to yeah, do dinner exactly. afterwards, which it is, is always out. a it is okay. It's sold out already. So there you go. So there you go. So come so up come from five to seven. And if you're in the dining mm -hmm. room, you can still hear them. <laughs> that's, that's a so pro tip. So make your reservations. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pro tip right there. Mm -hmm. Trish, do you have any questions from behind the camera? No, if there's anything else they want to follow. Okay, yeah. Is there any other, um, anything else you just want to talk about? Any, any things that we didn't cover? Boy, I can't think of anything right now. Um, I'm excited where 2020 brings us and playing these last few shows. It's really nice to be able to play a house concert next Saturday. Um, and I think we will just keep plugging along and, um, and just enjoying like, you know, what's nice about Allie and I is we're, we're good friends, you know, and we enjoy each other's company, which I think is always mm. a big perk when you're playing music. With oh, somebody, absolutely. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, you, you, you have your instruments here. Yeah. I, I you know, I think everybody noticed, right? <laughs> so I, you know, it, we we have time if you're if you're interested in playing something for we us. We would love to. It's about two o'clock right now. So. Okay, great, yeah. cool. Yeah. We have time for a couple. That'd be great. Um, so maybe we'll start with the one that uh, made it onto the show, Fosters. This oh, is called, great. This song's called Let It Go, and something that I'm struck by when I write a song is there's sort of like this timeless wisdom in in the lyrics sometimes that uh, come alive later on. Like I wrote this probably eight years ago, but it applies to me more now than it ever has. Isn't and, it funny how that happens? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. just kind of, it's like, so I wrote the song actually for myself, for my own freedom to, to just relax, just take a deep breath. And um, yeah, so now more than ever, I need this song. So this is called Let It Go.
Yeah. That was lovely. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. Uh, well, when I so I moved uh, from Bold or from Winter Park down to Boulder, and um, that move was super hard for me. I didn't mm. know anybody. <laughs> didn't have jobs everything started over and so we moved here right about you know it is also i wrote probably about eight years ago when i yeah. first moved to boulder and when the seasons were changing the song's called fall it's about transition and encouraging people during that time in their life which is most of us right mm. town today with leaves in his breath he said that it is time for another change but it'll be alright looking up the hill the colors start to fade branches break and my heart feels a new shade of gray but it'll be alright the nights to come will soon be longer. Will I let this season make me What's great about uh, getting to interview uh, people that I've never met before is that now I could be like a new fan. Yeah. So uh, you guys are wonderful. This is so totally. Thank you. Thanks so much, David. Yeah. 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 Nice so, to meet you guys. Yeah, it was a pleasure meeting you. So, yeah. Thanks, David. Right. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to catch Allie and Beth live sometime soon. And be sure to check back next month for our next featured artist. 
If you're interested in learning more about Sandbridge Music and becoming a part of Music for Change, check us out at sandbridgemusic.org. <laughs>